Today is the 30th anniversary of the Tiananmen Square massacre. And of course, there's a lot of virtual signaling by the mainstream media. But in this video, I kind of want to give you the latest updates with what is happening around this very hyperbolic, sensational topic, especially in China. And of course, just give you some context to think about with what is happening right now in the Western world. Now, before we get into that, plus a lot more, I sincerely want to thank everyone for downloading the Brave browser, which is a privacy focused cryptocurrency backed rewarding to the viewer for just browsing platform that I am using myself. And even though I don't have an official relationship with, I strongly recommend because of how good it is. And also they have an affiliate code, which gives you a small amount of the rewards to a creator you like, <coughs> like this one. <coughs> <laughs> and if you click the link and download this browser, you will not only get cryptocurrencies for yourself, but also just by browsing the internet at the same time supporting us, this independent media organization. Now, not surprisingly, the more we move away from an historic event, the more people forget, especially the younger people in our modern Instagram addicted day and age. Don't even know what Tiananmen Square is. It was a major student protest in 1989 that motivated an estimated a million protesters in the middle of the capital of China in Beijing, specifically in Tiananmen Square, where, of course, the government orchestrated a bloody crackdown on the movement that left an untold number of protesters of students dead in the street, marking one of the darkest chapters in China's history, and at the same time giving everyone an important lesson in history, showing you just how dangerous governments can be. And powerful images like this, like the tank man, a man with groceries just walking home, standing in front of a huge line of tanks that were making their way into the square, have essentially been erased in China, where a government crackdown on the image has made it virtually impossible to find or even understand. Even on Reddit, I remember reading a thread about pissed off Koreans who were getting telemarketing calls from China, who were told and were giving out advice that all you have to do for this telemarketer to stop calling you or texting you is to simply say or write Tiananmen Square into the chat room or phone call to have them and their ability to communicate with you totally disabled and with wide sweeping technocratic efforts with of course the help and participation by western companies and western technology china has essentially erased all mention of this by strictly censoring it and of course even any public discussion around this subject and even right now visitors have to have id checks and foreign journalists are even barred from entering tiananmen square as it is right now with of course tightening security as even CNN and Reuters are being blocked because of the articles about this 30th anniversary. And in places like Hong Kong, we saw huge demonstrations of defiance where even 180,000 people went to the streets for a candlelight vigil to mark the 30 year bloody Tiananmen crackdown. A massive vigil that is extremely stunning to see in one of the few places in China where you could still have vigils like this safely without a full government crackdown. And the images are awe stunning to say the least, giving hope that no matter how desperate, how insecure and far a country is willing to go to ban all mention of an event and try to wipe it from human history, there will still be human beings who will pass on this knowledge, even when this knowledge and this history is banned. There is even one video coming from the 26th year anniversary of Tiananmen Square of a man asking students around Beijing what happened on June 4th, showing the utter fear that people have of even mentioning or, or talking about this very anniversary. A stunning, perplexing video that makes you wonder how far of a chilling effect and fear mongering campaign can a government run to the point where people are even afraid to acknowledge that something happened on a particular date, to even be terrified to acknowledge that it actually even happened. 
Now, of course, we would be kidding ourselves not to understand that this anniversary has been politicized and is used in geopolitical circles for, of course, certain foreign policy directives. And that's why we're seeing a lot of strong talk from the United States, from China in response to it, with the current U.S. Secretary of State, Mike Pompeo saying, quote, that we honor the heroes of the Chinese people who bravely stood up 30 years ago in Tiananmen Square to demand their rights. Those events still stir our conscience and the conscience of freedom loving people around the world, even going as far as calling for a full public accounting of those killed and missing in the Tiananmen Square protest, which again is still an unknown number. China, of course, has responded with, quote, strong dissatisfaction, saying that China's human rights are in the best period ever. And of course, the back and forth continues. Now, in the Western media, this event is simply classified as a struggle for, quote, democracy their favorite little buzzword that means absolutely nothing to them and just like always espoused in our political dialogue especially on the mainstream media those words freedom and democracy absolutely have no meaning to the individuals mentioning them since of course they are always contradictory to what is actually going on not only just being a gross oversimplification of the exact details surrounding that event which of course had many many circumstances surrounding it that led to over a million students going of course to Tiananmen Square before the crackdown those of course also being economic pressures like growing economic disparity inflation corruption of the establishment state and the death of a political leader which all could be correlated to the quote opening of China, which of course was mainly done by U.S. foreign policy initiatives run by Henry Kissinger with interest from David Rockefeller that pretty much opened up China to globalization, creating slave labor camps there, deindustrializing and closing down manufacturing plants in the United States for, of course, the cheap labor that China provided, which of course is a very important detail that uh, I don't see a lot of the mainstream media covering when it comes to this specific event. And why would they? When there are specific threats against our freedoms in the United States, in the Western world, that they completely choose to ignore, and some would even say, cheer on. And that, of course, is specifically the technocratic corporate empowerment that's happening, as I would argue, the destruction of free speech is happening on because of. Because essentially, if you think about it, the main way that the Chinese government enforces their will and their authority against any form of protest or any form of wrong think that they disagree with regarding Tiananmen Square or other events, the main way they enforce that is, of course, with a track, trace, and database system that watches everyone's moves all the time in real life. And then, of course, politically targets individuals who they deem not worthy of thinking the right way, targets them and takes away their privileges. Something that, of course, is also happening in the United States right now. It happened with PayPal. It happened with MasterCard. It happened with Visa. And already the special interests that these quasi private corporations serve ultimately already have a controlling hand into what people see and don't see here in the United States. Even recently, Twitter had to apologize for suspending accounts critical of China, of course, ahead of this anniversary. And we're not just talking about people on the right or conservatives being censored here, since, of course, many anti-establishment voices have been shut down, including my own from our own Facebook page. But regardless of that just small, minute incident compared to everything that's happening here, if you look at larger incidences of what happened to Julian Assange, who, by the way, was blocked by the major credit cards, blocked by PayPal, is now in a jail cell fighting for his life because of his health being totally destroyed after being held captive essentially at, a, at an Ecuadorian embassy for over seven years now. All for the vicious crime of getting documents and releasing them to you so you could see what your government is actually doing. And even though he is a private citizen of another country, it has not stopped the United States from trying to extradite him and charge him 
for over 170 years, all for the crime of publishing, giving you truthful information about our government. And the same mainstream media and the same Secretary of State that, that detest and cry about Tiananmen Square, well, predominantly in the mainstream media, and specifically with Mike Pompeo, they cheer, they cheer on and applaud the vicious, monstrable, illegal, immoral actions that are happening against Julian Assange right now. And even though we have a slight moment where the mainstream media pretends that they actually care about human freedom, forgetting, of course, that they also serve special interests, we have to understand that this is not just hyperbolic talk since, of course, cases specifically in San Francisco in the United Kingdom and even places like Australia have shown how journalists are targeted for telling the truth. All of the help of big tech that, of course, is our modern age big brother. And that's why I always said China is the ultimate test subject in Brick Brother, seeing how far it could push the limits of human sovereignty, of human freedom, which, if the test is successful, will soon be rolled out to the Western world. This is only a matter of time, and this is already happening in very small steps, which are cheered on by the very people who are detesting the actual events that are happening to you to at Tiananmen Square, who, in my opinion, are ultimately leading us to more of these events to happen. And it's only going to keep happening unless we get our heads out of our butts and stop empowering the very beast that is big tech. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah, that, that's my take on it. What, what do you guys think? It'll be nice to do a lighthearted video sometime. Uh, I know this is a very serious topic, but with the anniversary happening today, I think topics like this are an important one to think about, to speculate, to theorize, since the dangers are very real. And historically speaking, events like this have happened many, many times before, and they are not anomalies. So yeah, that's my take on it. Hope you guys appreciated this video, and if you did, share it with your friends and family members. I appreciate you guys more than ever, because if it wasn't for you, I wouldn't be here, and that's why I love you guys. Stay tuned for more here on wearechange.org.